Kite Life is proudly brought to you by Cabrina. G'day and welcome to another episode of Kai Life, coming to you from the Sandy Beach Kiosk down here in Sandingham and with me is my co-host Natalie Clark. Nat, what's been happening in Melbourne? Hey Paul, oh, we have had the most interesting wind, um, but it's been great because I've had an opportunity to get out on every kite from my 6 to my 12 with a little bit of supping in between, so it's been good fun. Excellent, well we've got a whole bunch of riding coming up this week. First off, we're up to Cronulla to catch up with Rich Senning and the guys, so are you going to stick around? Love to, thanks Paul. Excellent, let's get into it. Yoo. Hi there, my name is Rich Stenning. Um, I live in uh, Sydney here, been here for about 10 years, originally from Canada. Uh, I'm a school teacher by day, try to get in the water here in Cronulla as much as I can, kind of home break, three o'clock knock off, and uh, as long as I don't have to look after the kids, I'm here at four o'clock, so yeah, it's, it's not a bad gig for, for kiting. Yeah, I've gone through a lot of different kind of changes in kiting, but I'm mostly in uh, on the, in the surf now with kind of strapless and unhooked generally, so that's kind of where I'm going at the moment. I ride for uh, Cabrina, so I use the Cabrina switchblades. I've been using them for a few years now. Uh, I just have a 7 and a 10, so today I was out on the 7 because it was pretty windy. I ride uh, underground boards, so I'm using uh, the Bahodu 6.2 and the Kapuna 5.8. Kind of gets gets me through most conditions. I also use a just a skim board when the conditions suit as well. Pretty much, we just go out in a southerly. We get a nice cross shore or cross on shore. It's good for for the natural footers forehand. Um, I kind of prefer the the southerly setup, but we got a nice few kilometers around the corner there, nice and safe. Uh, we get some nice swell in there. Uh, we generally leave the the kind of famous surf breaks behind us alone. Leave it to the surfers. Um, but yeah, there's plenty of water here in the corner and today we had a nice nor'easter so reverse everything and ride, try to ride some backhand. Uh, nice clean faces at least on the nor'easters. So yeah, good fun. Well, windy season, we're pretty much going to stop getting this wind probably any day now. Uh, coming into March, it kind of shuts down for a couple months. Um, so we kind of enjoy the last of the nor'easters. But we still get southerlies all year round. Um, and it's even possible to do kite in westerlies, but I wouldn't be suggesting it to the beginners. Um, it's good fun out there in a westerly because the wave faces are nice, but uh, it's pretty hard work. Uh, I guess my style of riding, I've, I guess it's back from snowboarding days. Um, I like kind of jibbing things and jumping and uh, just trying, trying different things, trying new things. Kind of gone away from twin tips and, uh, you know, I do it once in a while, every every few months I'll get on a twim tip for, for a minute, but I kind of get bored with that, so a lot of unstrapped stuff, a lot of kind of jumping unstrapped, I guess. Ah, uh, yeah, we definitely have a good crew. Um, there's quite a few people doing the kind of non-strapped stuff at the moment here at Cronulla. Um, yeah, good good friends. Go usually go around for a beer afterwards.
Yeah, I got plenty of years. There's quite a few old fellas around here, 50s and 60s, and yeah, they, you know, that, that means I got at least 15 years of going here. I want to bring my kids up trying to do it as well, so yeah, I'll pass it over to the kids when I, maybe 20 years time, I'd say. My name's Troy Gibson, I live here in Cronulla. I grew up down the coast where we kite surfed quite regularly. I learnt um, 10 years back, I guess, when we had two line kites and it was pretty hectic. We um, got going in the surf, so we had a few, few little issues along the way. But um, found that down, down, down the south coast in Wollongong, the conditions weren't as um, favourable as up here in Cronulla, in Sydney. Right now, we're just on the other side of our break, um, on the other side of the peninsula place called Barony Bay. Um, flat water obviously, um, where the boats all sort of live and chill out. Going right back to school, I used to surf a lot, like a couple of times a day, competitively on a local level and um, frothed out all the time of surfing. And um, then when the wind came, of course, there's no waves, so I took up windsurfing really briefly and um, dislocated my shoulder twice in no time at all. And um, seeing I had a bad shoulder, um, I didn't want to do the windsurfing anymore, so I thought kite surfing would be better because there's nothing you can fall into, apparently. <laughs> well, the development through kiting, like I really liked the twin tip stuff, and I started and doing jumps and you know trying to really push and learn new tricks and stuff, and that was fun. But as soon as I, as soon as the kite sort of developed into the stage where it was manageable to ride a surfboard, um, I actually forgot my twin tip one day down at down at down the south coast where I grew up and um, just started riding a surfboard without straps. And I seriously, only in the last six years, I've only ridden that twin tip maybe twice since, you know? So it's just really fun to be able to tow into little waves and get speed and try and do turns that you probably couldn't do with the surfing, you know? Alright, stick around guys, because coming up after the break, we're catching up with Michelle Blinker on. Plus, we're doing a bit of a downwinder. Now, Nat, you've had some experience <laughs> with some downwinders. Tell us yeah, about that. Yeah, it was just a year ago now that yeah. I did my um, Tassie to Melbourne trip. Little 240k downwinder. Just a little downwinder. Yeah, yeah, it's good fun. Awesome. More coming up after the break. Don't go away. Hi, my name's Michelle, I'm from Byron Bay. Um, I've been kiting for about seven years now. I've been competing in wave comps for about five years. Started off in freestyle, had a couple of wins there. And then I went to the wave titles, a couple of state titles and then a couple of Australian titles. Um, had a win at the Maroombula contest, one when it was sponsored by Mambo and then last year when it was sponsored by Corona. I really enjoy that comp because it's uh, everyone's out at the same time, there's no actual heats, so it's just a free for all and judges judge over the, a four day period, which is really, really good and it's really social. I like comps because you sort of get to catch up with everyone that you haven't seen for a while and it, and it forces you to go to locations that you maybe haven't been before or wouldn't go to. And um, it's just a always a really good atmosphere and I like competing. I'm not a natural competitor but I still like the competition side of it and giving it my best shot. We're at Flat Rock today which is um, near Ballina, between Ballina and Byron. I live in Byron. Um, since I've been back, it's been about maybe a month now. I haven't had a lot of wind. I've had maybe one kite here and two kites at Lennox, but we've had heaps of surf, so I've been getting back on the surfboard again, which is heaps of fun. At the crowded pass, but it's still a really nice wave, so it's worth going out. 
Um, it's pretty consistent and we've got like spots, good spots in a, for a northerly and good spots in a southerly so it's great having both and um, really good local crew. Um, as far as competition and free riding I love them both. I love the social thing for the comps, catching up with everyone that I haven't seen for a while and it just forces you to kite at different locations which is really good and I, I generally just like the competition side, competing. Um, I'd definitely like to give the PKRA, which is the World Tour, a bash in the Wave Division. Um, there's some great locations where they have the comps, um, so it'd be a really good opportunity just to suss out new spots that maybe I wouldn't go to otherwise. Um, and I'd just really like to give it a see what my ability is up against the top chicks in the world and um, give it my best shot and it'd just be a really enjoyable trip, I think, and I'd really like to do it. Originally they only had like about three contests in the wave division so the expense sort of outweighed the, um, the amount of comps and the prize money. It would be really expensive but this year they've actually got six, six comps, actually five. Um, so if, you could, if, you, if I can do like four of those comps it would be probably um, worth it. The guy that I used to work for, Warren Cornish, in uh, McTavish Longboards, um, he had some lessons and was, like, just loved it, so he recommended I give it a go and he actually bought me some lessons. And yeah, just from then, I was addicted. It's great. I started off freestyle, um, but my knees sort of were having a bit of trouble, so I took out the wave, the wave side. Because I, I am a surfer as well, so that helps. So I just naturally went to the surfing side. Freestyle is pretty hard on your body, especially at my age. <laughs> surfing takes a lot longer to get to you know, a higher level, I think. And if it wasn't for my surfing background, kiting in the waves would have been a lot harder for me. It would have taken a lot longer, but because I have that background already, it's, um, yeah, helped heaps. Instead of just surfing, I'm looking for the wind as well. Now, like, surfing used to be a full lifestyle for me. And combining the two is good, but it takes up a lot of time. Surf in the morning, then kite in the afternoon. I haven't got much time for anything else, really. <laughs> I fit work in there somewhere, but... No, it's great, great lifestyle. Cabrina switchblades, six and an eight. Um, I don't really like the bigger kites. If I can't get out on my eight, then it's probably not worth going out. So I like the smaller kites. I love the switchblades. Yeah, just the great in the waves. But, um, yeah, I love them in the surf. Um, I use uh, surfboard. I ride strapped and strapless, just depending on the conditions. If you're watching the sport and you think it looks fantastic, well it is. It's um, an awesome sport to participate in. All the kite crew generally are, are really good people and um, will help you out, especially when you're learning. Definitely go and have some lessons. Um, the safety aspect um, is really important, so you definitely need those lessons to start with. And if you're taught right, you'll progress really quickly. We need more of you out there, there's not enough women in the water. Just get some lessons and um, you'll have a great time and you'll always get the support that you need. Just enjoy it and try both, try the waves and freestyle. And, um, and if you haven't surfed before, um, as far as the waves go, just, just build yourself up to the conditions that you're comfortable with and you'll just get used to them and more and more comfortable and you'll go out in stronger winds and bigger waves and yeah, just keep at it. Hey, it's Wadey here. We're just down at Ricketts. We're just waiting for 32 knots to hit us. It's been northerly all day. But apparently wind is on the way, so we think we might be a little overcooked with our 9 metre kites. Um, but it is a race, and I don't want to be underpowered this year, so we're going to fly down to St Kilda. On a slow day when you're cruising around, it probably takes about an hour and a half. 
it'll be really interesting to see how fast uh, we can do it today. I think it might be more like half the time, probably 45 minutes I'm aiming for. Should be a lot of fun. It's looking pretty good. The weather's nice, wind's coming through. Pretty excited. Tactics? Um, just pretty much take Jamie out and uh, <laughs> take me bro out, that should be fine. As long as I beat those two, I'll be happy. Bringing up a Wayman Gypsy, seven metre. Probably, probably ideal for 30 plus knots. Hopefully it stays that. But if it doesn't, you know, you're doing it downwind, so you don't need a whole lot of power to get down to St Kilda, I don't think. These guys are great. Um, they're not a one pump, but in pumping the struts up individually, in my, in my opinion, I reckon you get everything a bit harder. Just takes a little bit more work, though. Tactics? Tactics? Uh, no, this guy has got downwind setting. You can adjust the bridle a bit. So I might run that option to see if it gives me a bit more of a, an edge over my competitors. Cheers. All right, so we're looking good. We've just had a good forecast. The wind's changed down at South Channel, so it's all going to pick up. It's a little bit stronger than we were hoping. It's 32 knots, but hell, we'll just go with it. Super fast downwind by the looks of it. Tactics? Tactics? Uh, big air. That's <laughs> all it's going to be. Big air and just, uh, yeah, just go down as fast as you can, man. So I've done one downwinder before, but it wasn't a race, so yeah, I'm pumped. It's starting from Ricketts Point and going down to St Kilda, Tani Shop, and uh, Hopefully it'll be a good southwesterly, so just right along the coast. Should be good fun. We've uh, been waiting here patiently with nothing, 40 degree day, just sort of light northerly blowing. And you never know if it's really going to come through, but um, our prediction's held fast. And the front has just hit us right now. Uh, we're just going to wait for it to build a little bit, and then we'll be right to go. So yeah, super pumped. All right, guys, welcome to the Katani Downwinder. Out of 46 competitors, we're down to a field of seven because it's come in at uh, 30 plus knots and a lot of people have gone hiding. So it's gonna be really fun. We've got two jet skis to follow us down. If you're in any trouble, just tap your head and the guys will come and pick you up. Or if you need to eject your kite, don't worry about it because it is quite nice and windy out there. We're gonna launch, we're gonna have a beach start launch. You can wade out into the water up to say knee deep and then Zig's gonna blow the pink whistle and wave his arm to let you know that we're off and racing. It's 18.1 kilometers to the finish line down in St Kilda. We come in just in front of the beach at Katani. Does everyone know where I mean? All right, so who's pumped? Yeah. All right, let's hit it. Let's go. All right, you ready? Got James Wade leading right now. He's in front, but the wind has died right out. So towed in by jet ski to the beach, and then we have the winner by default, James Wade. Uh, the race was uh, good fun at the start, and uh, towards the end it was just bloody hard work. But uh, I'm on the beach again, and, and I'm stoked. It's it's good to be back on my own because uh, there's a long swim back at the end when the wind dropped out. But it felt pretty strong at the start. It was, I think it was maybe 25 knots. I was on a nine square meter kite. Um, but as soon as we were heading straight downwind and you lose all the power in the kite and you race along fast, but then later on the wind just dropped down completely and I couldn't even get up on the plane. So at the end I had to loop the kite and body drag all the way to shore and then the wind dropped out completely 300 meters from shore and I had to swim in self-rescue so those are the lucky ones that uh, the jet ski got to first I had to swim the whole way in but uh, I'm happy I made it all by myself. 
Alright, you guys, don't go away because after the break, we're going supping. Awesome. Natalie, yeah. supping. Yeah, I'm really getting into supping. When there's no wind, it's a good opportunity to get out on the water, yep. enjoy your time out there, and keep that fitness up. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Don't go anywhere. Alrighty guys, here we are down on the beach. There's not much wind, so we're catching up with Hudson and Nat and Maddie. We're looking at light wind options and today at Supping. Hudson, tell us a bit about Supping in Australia. Oh, well, Supping has really gained a lot of popularity in Australia over the last few years. You know, it's sort of, uh, you know, people of all ages and all, you know, um, sort of walks of life are really, you know, taking it on and, um, you know, making it part of their, their recreation, you know. Um, it's a great fun activity to do whether you got waves where they just got flat water here in Melbourne. You know, it's a bit of a drive to the surf, but you can get out here on the bay and, um, you know, cruise around or, you know, make it um, part of your fitness regime. You know, a lot of people doing it for exercise and to sort of strengthen their, their core body. So, yeah, it's, um, it's good. It offers a lot for a lot of different people. Tell us a bit about the subs that we see there behind us. All right, well, yeah, these subs are Cabrina subs and, uh, you know, the Cabrina brand is really built around the Hawaiian lifestyle and Pete Cabrina's waterman lifestyle. Uh, you know, he drives the brand and, uh, you know, he's actually shaped these boards um, and he's really into supping and, uh, you know, he's, whether it's at, um, you know, Hukipo Lanes or, or even, uh, you know, some of the other spots around Hawaii there. So, yeah, it just forms a, yeah, it's another, another extra addition to the Cabrina range, but really, you know, still part of the, the, the Cabrina Hawaiian lifestyle and, and what the brand stands for. Yeah, cool. So, I see that they are, you know, they do come in all different shapes and sizes. Tell us about that. Subs come in all different shapes and sizes, and, and our boards, the Cabrina boards, are really, uh, you know, shaped around an all-round, um, you know, sort of target market. Um, we're looking for boards that are going to perform, you know, just as well on the surface as they do in flat water and pretty much be right for... For most people who are not looking for something really specific, you know, really specific for for either racing performance or for uh, surfing performance, yeah, really just an all-rounder. And and I guess how you choose the boards is just based on the size, you know. If you're like you said, a big person like myself, uh, you go for something a little bit bigger. Or if you're like Maddie, uh, you know, one of the smaller boards is definitely going to suit. Or if you're like Yai and you absolutely tear it to bits on a sub, then yeah, well, that's where you get to our Pro Series range that's coming out next year. Um, and yeah, we're really looking forward to working with Kiahi on that and uh, the boards are looking great. Alright everyone, it's Buyer's Guide time and today we're going to talk about the Cabrina Nomad kite and the Calibre board. This is the uh, freestyle equipment that uh, Albi Rondina is using on the PKRA World Tour and he's absolutely killing it. Uh, top 5 in 2010 and he's off to a great start. 2011. Uh, first off with the Nomad kite. Uh, this kite's really designed around uh, turning performance and being as responsive as possible and to achieve that Cabrina's gone with a effectively a bridled sea kite that incorporates our IDS intelligent depower system technology. Uh, being a sea kite that means the kite's very upright and the wingtips are basically underneath the root of the kite meaning uh, that it's, it's not very swept back and that makes uh, the Kite very responsive to bar input. It also allows the kite to actually fly through the turns with a lot of speed. And uh, on that, Cabrina have used six struts on the kite, um, mostly to stabilize the canopy and the wingtips, so that the kite can really power through those turns and fly with a lot of speed through the turns uh, without uh, the canopy blowing down and, and adding drag to the kite. So here we've got a kite that um, you know is actually accelerating through the turns, generating more power through the turns. Uh, and in it, because of its C shape, it's uh, you know more responsive. Um, one of the big changes that Cabrina did with the Nomad this year uh, is in the canopy uh, profile, and what they've tried to achieve there is a little bit more bottom end power without compromising on the uh, sort of on-off power that you need to um, perform freestyle, freestyle tricks and uh, the slack lines that you need to. Uh, or, or, the, or the make doing handle passes a lot easier. So the Nomad is definitely less powerful than other kites in the Cabrina range, but uh, you know that's that's that makes it actually easier to uh, you know progress and, and do freestyle tricks. Yeah. All right. So the Caliber board is our freestyle free ride board from Cabrina. Uh, the key features on this board are full wood core. It's got a full ABS rail, but most importantly, the quad concave in the bottom of the board. Uh, the tip and the tail uh, gives the rider a lot more grip, a lot more control, really grips the water. 
um, but that fades through to a flat center section uh, that allows the board to have a lot softer landings. It allows the water to displace better uh, you know, when you come down from a hard landing. Uh, the deck shape on the top is also 3D and that allows us to control the flex of the board a little better, giving it softer tips uh, but a nice relatively stiff and responsive center section between the feet. Uh, looks great and yeah, rips on the water, especially if your name is Albi or any of the boys. Natalie, supping. How much fun is it? Oh, it's awesome, yeah. especially when you see dolphins out there. Love that. It's really cool. Yeah. Guys, that's all we have for you on the show this week. For more information on the show or cutting in general, go to our website. Natalie, thanks for coming down and giving us a hand. My pleasure. See you all out on the water. Yeah.